Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm building a tall dresser to replace the very first dresser that I ever built. Now that old dresser, the drawers wouldn't open. It was made with the cheapest plywood that I could afford. But now I get to replace it and build something that I think is much nicer and it works better. Now this is a prime example why you need eight feet of outfeed for your table saw. <laughs> Literally, I can barely cut that a foot plywood panel. Now after I had my sides uh, cut to width, I went ahead and used my track saw to cut everything to length. You can see here I'm butting them together so I can only make one cut and have them perfectly to be the same uh, length. And then usually when I cut things on the table saw, big oversized panels, I like to cut them a little bit wider so I can go back and then cut into the exact width on the table saw. Here what I'm doing is I'm cutting some uh, plywood to be the supports, the stretchers if you will. Now one of the things that I found out in building cabinetry, and I learned this from people that know way, way more than I know, is to have two top supports, two bottom supports, and two back supports. And then the face frame will add a ton of strength to the cabinet. But here what I'm using, I'm just using glue and brat nails. <laughs> I don't know about you, but every time that I need to use my glue brushes, they have dry glue, so I get to peel them off really quickly and then get to, to building. So right here you can see I'm adding the two bottom supports and then the back supports, again, all with rat nails. Uh, one of the designs that, that changed throughout the project is initially I wanted to just to have straight plywood panels. But then I realized that it was just too plain, and so I decided to add uh, some some framing to the side of the panels. Therefore, I went with the brat nails, and in this case, with screws to add strength. Now, I don't think it's necessary with the glue and the brat nails. The cabinet is super strong, but adding this the screws doesn't hurt, and they will be covered with the the side frames. You'll get to see that as we continue to build. Adding the side frames, like I said, was kind of like an afterthought. So what happened was I had more alder that I didn't have any use for really. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna build this and, and it adds to the design of the piece and I think it actually does look great. So here I'm starting to cut all my face frame sides and, and my face, face frame members uh, so that I can assemble them later on. Now, I think I realized that this is not the most efficient way to build the sides of the cabinet. I should have used, you know, pocket holes and glue and create the, the frame and then attach it to the side of the, the panel. Again, because it was an afterthought, I didn't think about it. I was just kind of building as I, as I was going. And in fact, here you can see me I'm leaving about a quarter inch of uh, overhang in the back. In my mind, I was gonna put a quarter inch back, but I, I ended up not doing that either. <laughs> so again, I'm just making changes as I go. Uh, it's for us, for, for our house. So I think, you know, I have more freedom in what I wanna do and what I decide to do. Now I'm gonna have, uh, not necessarily plans, but I'm gonna have my cutting diagram and, and some of the images that I, I, I use to, to build these things. Now, again, they're not step-by-step, step, but it's what I use. So if you wanna see those for free, they will be on my website, link down below. Things that I'm trying to do is keep my, my cuts as tight as possible. Uh, you know, I'm using same method of construction, glue, brat nails, and then clamps just to kind of keep things uh, without moving. Using uh, one and a quarter inch brat nails and that actually bit me <laughs> later on and we'll get to that in a second. But here, uh, uh, the alder that I had, it was two and a half inches and my design actually calls for two inch face frames. And so I went ahead and I cut half an inch on the table saw and then I went ahead and used my pocket hole jig to get all those uh, members, all those stretchers, all those rails, <laughs> pocket hole. And here I'm using a seven inch uh, spacer to build my face frame. 
Now, again, some of you might not like pocket holes, but the reality is that many professional cabinetry shops use pocket holes because they're such a great way to, to build uh, this thing. Now, they're not for everything, but for this case, for face frames, they are actually really good. Then here I moved on to build a top now, in another video, someone suggested that I should get a vacuum press. And yes, I should. <laughs> I just haven't. Uh, so again, same method of construction, two pieces of plywood, ton of glue, and then inch and a quarter brat nails, and then a ton of clamps on the edges. So I make sure that those are bonded well. At some point, I'll get a, a vacuum press, and I'll show you that when I get it. Now, this is essential right here. Uh, I'm starting to, to sand everything. It is very important that the face frame it is as flat as possible so that when you attach it to the case, it actually sits well. So I sanded the face frame, the back, and also uh, where it's gonna be placed, like the top of the case, I guess, or the front of the case. And here I'm adding pocket holes to attach the case to the face frame. Now this will make sense in a second, uh, but yes, pocket holes for the win. Uh, adding glue and uh, the face frames, now you can see the pocket holes on the side and then you can kind of see the design too. Again, initially it was just a plywood panel, but then I added the the, the side and I think that gives it a, a whole different look. It makes it look very beefy and uh, it, looks, it looks nice. Using clamps to, to align everything and hold it uh, temporarily and temporarily <laughs> until I attach the pocket holes. I usually build the face frames to be about uh, an eighth bigger than the case. That is so that I can center it and then use a flush trim bit to uh, flush trim it. Now, <laughs> one of the things with routers is I never remember which side I should go. So I started on one side, I realized it was the wrong side, quickly stopped and went ahead and did it the right way. That's the good thing about uh, building an oversized that uh, actually was able to trim that flush and there's no mistake. Same idea here with the top. The top is built oversized so that once it was dried, I can go ahead and start cutting one side and then the other side and then the front and then the back. So that's why you see me cutting here the top. Now I decided to uh, frame the top so that there's no visible plies. Now before I've done like a miter uh, frame, I guess if you will, but uh, for this one, I just decided to do a butt joint really. So I added two sides and then I added the front and I actually like how that looked too. So at this point you can see the frame or, or the case. Now here I make the huge, a, a huge mistake. So here I'm adding spacers to basically bring the sides of the case flush with the, with the face frame. Now I'm using half inch plywood for those spacers and I still have inch and a quarter uh, brad nails. So if you do the math, three quarters by half an inch is inch and a quarter. Now because the brat nails usually go a little bit deeper than that, you can see right here, I'm shooting right through my case. Now, at this point, I didn't realize it, uh, and I went ahead and I did, <laughs> you see, three more sides, and here is when I realize my big mistake. Yes, come on, bro, you should know better. Well, if you ever made a mistake, put it down in the comments. How will you fix it? I mean, again, it was for us, so I decided I'm just gonna uh, put some filler and, and I actually uh, filed those brat nails flush and I added some filler, but it really didn't fix it. I mean, I, I didn't know what to do and <laughs> it was so disappointing, but you know, you just keep moving on, you make mistakes because it was for us. I, I didn't think much of it afterwards and it actually once the, the cabinet is finished, you can barely see it. But uh, yeah, how will you fix, fix it? Put it put it down in the comments below. Then I turned the cabinet on the side and I added the slide, uh, the, the cabinet, the, the drawer slides. Um, basically, I'm adding them to the bottom of each opening and an eighth in. That's just the way that I do it. Now, I've said this before on the channel, I'll say it again. My hardwood dealer has drawer sides, basically, or drawer stock. What that is, is a, they have a different width, but this one is six inch, and it already comes pre-finished on both sides. It comes with a bull nose on top, and it comes with a quarter inch 
dado or yeah dado at the bottom you see it right here so I could make my own stock or I can just pay like six dollars for six feet or something like that is super cheap and, and so I, this is how I build my drawers why because they're pre finished I don't know about you but I hate with a passion to pre finish or to finish drawers because there's so many corners so I just buy this and this is how I do my drawers I create a little rabbit at the end of you know the front and the side and again blue and brat nails now I could use a different method of construction but again is for us so I didn't really mind having the the brat nail holes there but you can use different methods of construction here but this is the by far the best way that I found to build drawers because once I build this it's already done it's already finished like I don't have to apply finish to it and I'll also use for the bottom I use a quarter inch finish on one side that's what it's called I think I uh, or UV on one side one of those things I can remember uh, but this is how I build drawers and I'm never going away from this method because it's so easy uh, now one of the things that you do have to do one of the things that you want to do is uh, number one subscribe the but also uh, you want to cut your back side of your drawer shorter so if you notice right here my back side is shorter than the front that is so that I can slide that quarter inch bottom and then I actually ping nail it to the back or to yeah to the back and also I add uh, I think like a one screw one or two screws just to keep it uh, there here I'm cutting my back again you can see it is actually finished on one side the, the top so that allows me to once I slide that bottom in the drawers are done I love that The drawer slides are attached to the cabinet at the bottom of each opening and the drawer boxes have the, the slider at the bottom of each drawer. What that does, it, it provides a perfect spacing uh, from, the, from the opening. So for me, I don't have to worry about you know, how high or how low do I set the slide in the drawer slide. I just put it at the bottom of each and they just fit perfectly. Now, I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head, but you kind of saw it on the picture. Here, I am adding a very small round over on all sides. Now for the drawer fronts, again, I didn't show this, but you'll see it towards the end. I'm using plywood. Uh, that's what I did for my daughter's dresser. Again, if you haven't seen that video, it's on my channel. But I really like the look of that front you know, veneer, alder with the exposed plywood with a nice round over and then finish. And so this is what I'm, what I'm, what I did. Now for the finish, I'm using uh, general finishes, the water base, ah, my, the name's scaping, but I'll put it here somewhere. Uh, I love this thing. It's so expensive though, but it, it does sprays very nicely. Uh, I forgot the name. Okay. To attach the drawer fronts, man, I'm, I, I'm running out of breath. But uh, what I do is, because the drawer, drawer pulls that I'm using, we're gonna be right in the middle. I lay the cabinet on its back, and then I drill a hole, and actually not a hole, I, I screw a screw right in the center of each uh, drawer. What that does is it provisionally, or temporarily, temporarily attaches the drawer front to the drawer, and then I send it up the cabinet, and then I measure to make sure that everything was spaced evenly. And then from the inside, I attach a one inch screw to permanently touch the drawer front to the drawer. And then what I do with that is I go back, take the screw that was in the center out, drill a three eighths hole and add my hardware and this is it I mean this is the easiest way that I found again to add drawer faces to a drawer once everything was done um, I moved it inside you know I did the, the mandatory I have to you know show you how every 
drawer opens and closes because i mean look at that soft close so so nice but anyway if you're still watching thank you so much for watching i appreciate your time and hopefully you have learned something you have uh, enjoy watching and if you have any questions please let me know i love to answer any questions down below and share any of the knowledge that i have although it's not much i'll tell you what i know and why i did what i did so if you make it up to this point feel free to subscribe like share bell i mean all those things that you're supposed to do because you know that's i guess what you're supposed to do but with that said we'll see you guys on the next one bye bye pura vida